Namaste viewers. I am Rekha Rao, an independent researcher in the field of ancient history and archaeology. The topic I intend to present today is about the hand gestures in the beautiful Divyangana figures which adorn the walls of the great Steppel monument, Rani Kibau, which was constructed in 11th century by the Chalukyas of Gujarat called Solankis. Uh, I present the general view of the seven-story Steppel monument. The monument was sponsored by the widowed queen Udayamati in memory of her husband, King Bhimadeva, and she aspired to make it the most ornate monument, which attracted artists, scholars, intellectuals, and businessmen who frequented the Silk Road from ancient times. Wow means a step well. Since the construction of this well was sponsored by a queen, it got the name Rani Ki Wow. Rani Ki Wow is without a roof structure. It is a seven story step well in the Mahasana district of Gujarat. It's an astonishing monument which had uh, which has hundreds of well-preserved sculptures of semi-divine and high-ranking divinities. Currently, it has been upgraded as a UNESCO World Heritage Monument, and now Indian currency of 100 rupees note has the picture of Rani Kevau too. The special feature of sculptures in this monument is that the semi-divine female figures, which are over 300 in number approximately, alternate with high-ranking deities, being a source of good water. Rani Wow was not only frequented by women folk, but also a religious place with pillared halls for monks to rest in rainy season. It was frequently visited by tourists and businessmen who relaxed in the pillared halls. Students pursuing the study of iconography of figures of deities also visited this place. After the general view, I present slide two. This is the general view of sculptures at Rani Kibau. Uh, I give a brief note on where is Rani Kibau, when was it constructed, the special features of Indian temples in general, and the speciality of this monument. Indian temples are conglomerate monuments which incorporate many branches of science along with religion. The science of geology, geometry, engineering skills, iconography, astrology, Ayurveda, yoga, and philosophical topics are some that can be named. Many temples are studied with infinite number of sculptures in which many of the above mentioned branch of knowledge are depicted. Though the details of scriptures followed are not inscribed in temple inscriptions. The devotees can understand and learn about the multiple aspects of science involved in temples and also aspects related to our cultural heritage. We can see in the pictures how the semi-divine female figures of different themes alternate with high-ranking deities in the series of panels. It gives an impression that the semi-divines and high-ranking deities had equal importance. In today's presentation, I focus only on the semi-divine female figures, which look like beautiful apsaras, and the different types of hand gestures they depict. The talk is uh, distributed in five sections. Um, I was asked many times by many people, though belonging to Karnataka, why I chose to study Rani Kivau figures of Kujira. Uh, secondly, interesting observation on health related topics that were part of this well architecture. Then I give a brief note on Dakinis. Then fourthly, the significance of Mudra Vignana, the science of hand gestures. And lastly, the study of Mudra Vignana in the female figures of Rani Kivau. 
regarding the first topic, um, what inspired me to work on these figures is in one of my meetings with Dr. Yesara, the renowned archaeologist, former Deputy Director General, Archaeological Survey of India, while I was uh, working on the dance figures of Belur Chennakeshwa Temple, he showed me some pictures of Apsara like figures of Rani Kibau and asked me to work on what type of dance is depicted in these figures. The well adorned Apsara like figures did show some leg postures and hand gestures, but looked incredibly unique as they look different from the enchantress or dancing Apsaras. <laughs> now, I present slide three. The notable features that I observed at the first glance of female figures were that these female figures are not related to episodes of Purana or the epics. They are not into the act of dancing. They did not show the instrumentalists who are usually present in the depiction of musical dance themes. They were not placed as bracket figures on pillars that is used for depiction of Apsara figures, but positioned on either side of high ranking deities on a lotus space. Many figures depict the Divyangana to be with small balls that can be seen in the first two pictures. Uh, the balls are peculiarly balanced at pelvic bone region or above the head and below the foot, but depicted art artistically as if she is playing with balls. Many panels are associated with peculiar themes of snakes around the body, hitting at points that are identified as marmasthanas or the places in the physical body where nerves intersect. But the lady does not show any expression of fear for snakes. Some figures showed the Sahaja Asanas, the simple stretch postures and the hand gestures of Mudra Vignana, which are essential to the maintenance of a healthy physical body. They did not show multiple secondary figures other than a single dwarf figure in some figures. Each figure was fitted in between two pillars on a lotus base. I tried to locate the leg and hand postures of these figures according to what is prescribed in Narte Shastra, but nothing was convincing. I tried to imitate the leg postures physically and realized very soon that they are typically the postures of Sahaja Asanas, which are given by therapists for maintenance of physical health. I was convinced that the theme of female figures of Rani Kivau are not into Apsara's dance depiction. I tried to correlate them with the different categories of Divyangana figures. Though some of them showed snakes, they were not Naginis or Nagakanyas because they were not with hoods on their head. They could not be classified as Shalabanjikas who are usually presented with trees. Our yachis as uh, fertility theme was not depicted in Rani Kibau. They were not multiple armed nor with animal representation as vahanas that are usually seen in yogini group of figures. They were also not Siddhastri representation as they did not depict supernatural powers. They were just semi-divines on lotus pedestal with multiple arms or uh, without multiple arms or vahanas. It is because they did not come under any of the above set classification of Divyanganas. I undertook a research study on Dakini group of semi-divines, which appeared to be more convincing for the themes that were depicted in these figures. Regarding the vastly different hand gestures that were like Mudra Vignana gestures and which were not like the typical hand gestures of classical style of dance, I took some extra classes by yoga experts and acutherapy masters to know more about the topic of mudra vignana and acupoints, which were greatly helpful to study the semi-divine female figures of Rani Kibau. It was interesting to observe that the health-related topics appear to be part of stephel architecture. Ayurveda, yoga and its branches have always been a part of our heritage. 
awareness and maintenance of physical body is the very fundamental step before exploring about the mind and spirit which resides in the body. Our ancient scholars understood the value of good health for comfortable living and have given importance to it in the Steppel Monument. The themes of these figures are very vast. One can easily trace foot reflexology, acupressure, and Kundalini Chakra positions indicated in these figures. But today's talk focuses only on the hand gestures, which are the mudras of Tattva Yoga, a branch of the therapeutic science that are beautifully documented in Rani Kivau. The finger positions are very clearly depicted, though some figures show a related accessory held in mudras. It is because of the depiction of varied themes in these panels, I have analyzed the figures to be Dakini figures holding mudras. Uh, so before proceeding to hand gestures, I would like to say who are Dakinis and what mudra vignana is. Uh, now coming to the point, who are Dakinis? Dakinis are the female embodiment of enlightened energy and goddess of lesser rank found in both Hinduism and Buddhism. Dakinis of early Puranic episodes commonly meant them as powerful and dangerous feminine forms, but they are different here. Tantra of Buddhism has a lot of reference and representation of Dakini goddesses. Buddhist Tantra places Dakinis as heroes of the path of enlightenment. Dakinis are both in celestial form as goddess and also as human form in Buddhism. They are involved with activities of both worldly and the spiritual perspectives. That is the words of samsara and nirvana. As protectors of physical and mental health, they are invoked for relief from physical problems encountered by humans. According to tantras, Dakinis, Dakinis transform the energy of sent, sentience from worldly or mundane to spiritual path. The analysis is based on the fact that the figure shows holding of mudras of mudra vidnana, the themes and activity depicted match with the varied classification of Dakinis. Dakinis traverse in the sky are projected as sky travelers or sky dancers. They are kecharis and hence a roof is not constructed where Dakinis are present. This can be seen in Raniki Wow also which has no roof. Now coming to hand gestures, I furnish a brief introduction about uh, what mudras are and what is mudra vignana. We see a lot of mudras in classical dance forms of India. Mudra vignana mudras are different from hand gestures of dance. Many sculptures of uh, semi-divine celestial beauties it, it Rani Kivav indicate hand gestures of mudra vignana. That is the science of hand gestures which are classified as Tattva Yoga, an essential aspect of the yoga system. They are incorporated in such a way that only on a closer observation, it can be noticed. Otherwise, on a casual observation, the panels are usually admired as Nagakanyas because of the snakes, or as Apsara playing with balls, or also Apsara with monkeys and so on. Hand gestures. Uh, mudras are basically the way of holding finger joints. It is derived from the root word mud in Sanskrit, which means joyful and that which gives satisfaction. Vignana is the understanding of science of mudras. On this section, one may find just muscles, tendons, blood, bone and nerves in all fingers. But the holistic power of hands in fingers was realized and channelized as a therapeutic method in ancient times. Mudra Vignana was the easiest ancient and time-tested therapeutic practice that was invoked to maintain good health. Queen Udaimati sponsored the construction of this eternal steppel monument with compassion to civilians. 
to promote the knowledge of mudras for good health and well-being as one of the several intentions associated. Indian tradition and culture from ancient times are deeply influenced by principles and practice of hand mudras and used both in cultural and therapeutic heritage of India. Hand gestures are of three types, laukika, vaidika, and tatvayava. Laukika means abhinaya mudra used by dancers. Vaidika mudras are used by priests and Tattvaiva mudras are by yoga therapists. There is no connection between them, but they reveal the artistic and creative minds of our ancestors to a great extent. Now I present slide four. This is about Abhinaya or Laukika hand gestures. Laukika mudras or Abhinaya mudras our hand gestures are used in the art of dance. These laukika mudras are the folding of specific or various finger joints which are named differently and used to convey or indicate specific usage based according to the explanation of Natya Shastra. Each hasta mudra is used by dancers to communicate a specific meaning and they are like the language of classical dancers to communicate the meaning involved in the script of the song. They are like visualizing words of the song uh, conveyed through hand gestures that change very fast from one to another. In the picture, we can see some hand gestures used in classical dance form. This is mostly in Bharatanatyam style of dance. Now, Vaidika Mudras are used by priests in ritual practices of worship session, along with chanting of mantras, uh, they are called Vaidika Mudras. The origin dates back to Vedic time. Learning of Veda Samhita recitations went along with movements of hand as a methodical way to lessen the ambiguity in reciting. The grammar part of Hrasva or Dirgha Swaras, the short or long pronunciations were taught through hand gestures. In Rigveda, Hasta mudras are used to represent the lengthening of syllables, the short or long sounds, etc. Samaveda uses hand gestures to represent accents and their mantras like Krisma mudra, Dirga mudra, Oshte mudra, Murthanya mudra, Akara, Nakara mudra, and some Vaidika mudra to name in which finger positions vary. The mantras are translated to visualize hand gestures and the practice of it looks mystical, practiced by priests. Now coming to the point, how the fingers are held in Tattva Yoga Mudras and how they are related to the five elements. Now I present slide five. Tattva Yoga Mudras, uh, Tattva means element, the primary substance of essential nature of five elements. The hand gestures used for balancing the five elements in the body are called Tattva Yoga Mudras. The science of mudra is the finest part of yoga practice that are universal and suitable for everyone for a welfare. Tattva Yoga, a part of Kriya Yoga, is a limb of Tantra Yoga, which intends to move the inner energy to higher levels through conscious awareness. It calls for, act, for active conscious participation by the person who intends for good health. Kriya Yoga means to try with an effort to do. The Yoga Raj Upanishad, Dattatraya Yoga Shastra describes yoga is a science of health of body, mind and spirit. The goal of holding Tattva Yoga Mudras is to bring about an equilibrium and a state of calmness in the body. It is like a self-discipline of the body to harmonize with the five elements present in our system. They can be held at any time, even as the person is sitting, relaxing or walking. However, the effect is more when practiced in Padmasana, the lotus posture or Vajrasana. 
Mutra Vignana is based on the time-tested method of visualization of the five elements in fingers. Hands have a power of their own. The peculiar pattern pose of the hand, the curling or folding, stretching or locking of fingers with the thumb or palm constitutes a hand gesture, which is technically called mudra of mudra vignana. It occupies a conspicuous position among the branches of science of yoga because it interacts and calms the nervous system. In the picture, we can see how the five elements are associated with the five fingers. About the relation of five fingers uh, the, and the five elements, Tattva is related to Panchatattvas, the five elements. The universe is composed of five elements like Prithvi, Jala, Agni, Vayu and Akasha. So also every human body is alive because of the manifestation of five elements within. The healthy distribution of five elements of universe and the individual uh, physical body are compared at macrocosmic and microcosmic levels respectively. Our ancient Vedic scientists of yoga had realized that there lies a natural order and healthy distribution of panchatattvas at both levels of universe, that is microcosmic and microcosmic, and in each physical body of humans. Any disturbance, disorder, or deficiency in the five elements results in an imbalance and havoc. At macrocosmic level, it is like earthquake, floods, volcanoes, etc. In human body, that is at microcosmic level, the imbalance manifests as a disease in a human body, like body pain, imbalance in water content, like diarrhea, imbalance of Agni Tattva as fever or acidity, or imbalance of Vayu Tattva as asthmatic attack or communication problems, etc. Understanding the physical body is the first step of awareness. Human body often suffers an imbalance with the elements due to the faulty ways of living. And these can be rectified to a certain extent by the practice of hand gestures, hand mudras for specific periods and not changing fast like dance mudras. Tattva yoga mudras are believed to give immediate effect or relief on the parts of the body as they liberate energy that is locked within in the energy channels called nadis. These elements are visualized to be the five fingers of the hand by ancient sages as each area of the hand is connected to an area of brain. Hand is a vital organ with tremendous flow of energy. Each finger represents one of the five elements. The thumb, Angushta, plays a major role, represents the element fire, Agni, the awareness. Then the forefinger, the Tarjani symbolizes the element of Vayu, that is air. Middle finger, the Madhyama, stands for Akasha Tattva, the sky. The ring finger, Anamika, for the earth. And the little finger, Kanishta, represents Jala, the Vayu Tattva, sorry, water Tattva. Of the several mudras, only some examples are considered now. Physiologically, the basic principles of hand gestures lie in the toning of nervous system in hand by keeping the specific nerves in stretch position for a specific period. Mudras help in creating inner peace, inner strength, eliminate fatigue, anxiety, and protecting both physical and mental health. And now, a short note on how fingers are held is the elements connected with fingers get the impact when they meet the thumb and gently pressurize. The thumb plays a major role. According to the principles of hand reflexology, the top part of the thumb corresponds to the brain part. The strength of the element in each finger neutralizes in the body when the top of the thumb touches the top part of the finger or fingers. The strength of the element reduces 
to a greater level when the corresponding finger is bent to touch the base of the thumb and the top of the thumb presses the joint like this. Then the third point is the third position in which uh, uh, is, the third position is when the thumb itself is bent to the base of any finger the tattva enhances. The practice of this science brings about a change in flow of elements in the body, holding hand gestures and applying mind on it. This is the most important part of focus. To normalize the energy balance, the bodily endocrine secretions and the imbalance of five elements in the body. In the figure five, we can see how the fold of the ring finger ring finger joints varies to make two different mudras. When the tip of the thumb and the ring finger are in contact, it is Prutvi mudra. When the tip of the same finger is folded to touch the base of the thumb or the palm and the thumb presses the joint of the finger, it becomes Surya mudra. I will come to this uh, explanation later as depicted in sculptures. Similarly, mudras are held with other fingers also. Now coming to the last point, Tattva Yoga Mudra in sculptures. Mudras are many, so also Dakini figures in Rani Kibau. Only 12 mudras which relate to the elements of nature that are demonstrated in some Divyanganas of Rani Kibau are chosen for this talk. The mudras I explain are Dana Mudra, Apana Mudra, Prana Mudra, Acharya Mudra, Surya Mudra, Mutrashay Mudra, Aditi Mudra, Prithvi Mudra, Surabhi Mudra, Shunya Mudra, Akasha Mudra and Vayu Mudra. Since mudras are related to peripheral nerve endings and energy is high in this part of fingers, both the psychological and physical transformation it brings are analyzed. According to the masters of Mudra Vijnana, of the, of the several mudras, Nana Mudra, Prana Mudra and Vayu Mudra are to be practiced every day for 15 minutes. The other mudras are to be done only when the body suffers a disturbance with elements, resulting as physical problem. The Dakini figures show activity of holding the mudras. In some, it is specific mudras only. And in some, they are the accessories. I have attempted to project the fingers holding mudras and the way of holding it physically is also provided as a picture for comparison. Now I proceed to explain how these hand gestures, mudras are depicted in the sculptures. Viewers can attempt to try the mudras as depicted in the supporting picture as I go through describing it. Now coming to the uh, first mudra, Gnana Mudra. I present slide six for Gnana Mudra. Uh, the two fingers used in this Gnana Mudra are the thumb and the index finger. Thumb is the seat of Agni, the light of awareness. Index finger is related to Vayu or the mind that wanders eternally. The tip of the index finger and the top of the thumb are mutually touched. And the three fingers are kept apart in straight or can be in relaxed position also. The balancing between Agni Tattva and Vayu Tattvas are established with this mudra, which means the wandering mind harmonizes with the awareness and comes to control. Vayu for four finger is compared to movement of mind. It gets stabilized by the Agni, the power of light of awareness. Practice of Gnana Mudra and retaining it for long periods give an instant effect on relaxing the mind from wandering state. Buddha holds Gnana Mudra in right hand. The benefits of this mudra are, it sharpens memory, mental concentration, it awakens the spiritual feelings, 
reduces negative emotions like anger, anxiety, mental tension, and cures insomnia. In the above figure, uh, Divyangana holds Damaru in Gnana Mudra above her head. The sound vibrations of percussion instrument leads to a state of trance and helps to attain bliss. The Sarchit Ananda, it is called. She depicts the oneness with Shiva. She is the promoter of wisdom through sound vibrations of percussion instrument. In the second figure, she holds palm leaves in left hand and the writing tool in right hand in Gnana Mudra. And the theme is related to acquiring Gnana. Now, next, uh, I present slide seven, that is Apana Mudra. When the tips of the middle finger and the ring finger joins the tip of the thumb and the other fingers are held upright or relaxed, it becomes Apana Mudra. Uh, the picture, in the picture, the lady Dvyangana is holding Apana Mudra in her right hand, holding a pot. It establishes equilibrium with earth ether and agni tattvas. The benefits of practicing this mudra are, it facilitates the discharge of waste matter from the body, like sweat, urine, stools, and purifies the digestive system. It eases the problems of difficulty in labor and in child delivery. Also, child delivery becomes easier with upon mudra. In the above figure, Divyangana holds Apana Mudra in her right hand. Uh, the sculptures depict a lady with twin babies, one in the hand and other at the base. She is cleaning the anal region of the baby with water from Kamandala, the purificatory jack. This relates to the aspect of Shaucha, the purification of bo both body and mind. The baby is symbolic of purity of thought. Indian philosophy believes in both purity of body and thought as the fundamental steps before meditation, which are personified here as twin babies. Accumulation of matter for long at both levels turns toxic to the body. The elimination of accumulated matter at both uh, at physical and mental levels are to be observed for a peaceful state of existence. This aspect of Shaucha is well depicted in the figure. Now I present slide eight, Pranamudra. Pranamudra, when the tips of the little finger and the ring figure together touch the tip of the thumb and uh, the middle finger and the index finger are kept in stretched position. It results in prana mudra. This mudra can be held in horizontal or vertical position in one or both hands. It deals with harmonic compounding of jala tattva. The little finger that also relates to flow of blood or water. To three, the ring finger coming in contact uh, with Agni Tattva or the thumb, which means the flow of liquid and Prithvi elements are brought to a neutral state. Instant effects of the vibrations are felt with closed eyes and focused mind. The physical benefits of this Prana Mudra are many, like it induces youthfulness, alacrity, improves the overall good health by toning immune system, and enhances the energy levels by regulating the flow of blood pressure in the body. It is helpful to overcome tiredness and weakness as the muscles get energized and thus helpful in relieving pain in the limbs. In the above figure, Divyangana is releasing the knot of her kunchuka, the breast band, in left hand, holding prana mudra. This indicates the release of energy from the knotted or constricted state. 
She also depicts the acute balls under her foot as part of reflexology practice, where nerve endings of the foot are activated to facilitate in renewal of circulation, thereby in energy levels also. It demand, let me demonstrate by holding a, a wooden acute ball with hard projections. Similarly, she depicts uh, the activation of thumb nerves that promote in the activating the nerve endings according to hand reflexology. These uh, wooden acute balls are available uh, at many places. The ball fits, it's a small ball that fits into the fist and uh, helps to pressurize the thumb, uh, which is exactly depicted in the sculpture. The third picture is the drawing uh, of the distribution of two major nadis, the Ida and Pingala nadis in human body. They correspond to the motor and sensory nerves, the ends of which are in foot and in hand figures, especially the thumb. Red line on right side is masculine, masculine force, shows Pingala nadi, the motor nerve. The black line is the feminine ida, corresponds to sensory nerve. We get a picture of the major nerve endings in foot and hand. Uh, you, one can observe the thumb in the figure, which is highlighted in the sculpture. Now I present next slide, nine, Acharya Mudra. Acharya Mudra, when all the fingers are held straight and the thumb is slightly drawn to your side and kept near the shoulder or facing the sky, it results in Acharya Mudra. The benefits of practicing this mudra are, it increases confidence level, make it the person fearless, increases the feeling of Shraddha, that is faith and forgiveness. It also gives relief in back and lung related problems. In the above figure, Divyangana holds Acharya Mudra in her right hand. She's with the Shaman, the master of Tantra lineage, who is massaging the knee part and simultaneously he is pressing the front acupoint uh, of her foot as a related treatment. Please observe the foot of uh, the foot of the Shaman pressing the specific foot part of the lady. The second uh, figure uh, in the temple prior to this panel in the sepulchre depicts a lady in a painful face and scorpion biting in the knee region. This indirectly refers to the toxin entering in the knee region and arthritic problem of accumulation of toxin in knee region. And the master is offering a specific type of massage treatment for it as seen in the first picture. The pulling of beard is a metaphor for pain similar to the, that of a scorpion bite. The painful experience of toxin accumulation in knee is compared to a scorpion bite. Patients with Acharya Mudra is indicated to be practiced by the Divyangana. Now I present slide 10 for Surya Mudra. Surya Mudra is when the ring finger is folded down to touch the root of the thumb and the top portion of the thumb is applied on the middle or the, of the ring finger and the other fingers are kept in comfortable straight position, it results in Surya Mudra. The elements of Agni is pressing on the folded ring finger and the imbalance in Prithvi Tattva is reduced in this mudra. It is usually held in both hands. Ring finger refers to Prithvi Tattva in the physical body. It refers to skeletal and muscle structure that gives support to the body. The imbalance in body is suppressed by higher activity of some, uh, higher activity of sun or thumb finger. Sun symbolizes energy and the Surya Nadi gets purified in the mudra. The benefits of uh, practicing Surya Mudra are, it normalizes the pain due to blood pressure, activates the body and mind from lethargy and dullness, 
it improves heat in the body, inducing alacrity and activity. It activates the digestive system and helps in reducing body weight and mental heaviness. The regular and long practice of Surya Mudra awakens supernormal powers in human psyche. Many panels of Divyanganas hold Surya Mudra in both hands, either to rejuvenate the Manas Shakti or Prana Shakti when they are in a disturbed state. In the first picture, uh, she holds, uh, she holds, uh, she is depicted nude as an unadorned figure, which is indicative of an unadorned state of mind. Like to say, uh, when mind or manashakti is disturbed. It is difficult to indicate mind in sculptures. The left side uh, corresponds to Ida Shakti or the mind which is troubled and Surya Mudra is very clearly referred in the sculpture in right hand for this state. Surya Mudra is very clear in the second picture too. The third picture shows the snake worn on her leg, which may hint the feeling of tightness in leg like cramps. I would like to mention that the snake has been used as a motif in these figures to convey different expressions and not as a poisonous animal hitting her in reality. The Divyangana is holding the old shaped serpentine stone in her right hand uh, and lifting the right hand up she suggests, uh, which is suggested by doctors also to release the pain from cramps. The last picture is that of how serpentine stone looks like. The most obvious physical properties of serpentine stones are, it's mostly green in color, patterned appearance on surface and slippery feel. These remind the observer of a snake and that is where the name serpentine was derived. Serpentine stone is used as it has strong energy known to stimulate arousal and balancing of kundalini energies and also in blockages of chakra energy. This green stone may assist with healing problems within the heart and lungs and it is an excellent stone for cellular regeneration. Many figures of Ranki Wow show the holding of oval shaped serpentine stones. Next slide, uh, slide 11, I present Mutra Shaya Mudra. Mutra Shaya Mudra is when the ring finger and the little finger are bent to touch the base of the thumb and the thumb is pressing the uh, middle part of both fingers, finger joints, it results in mutra shai mudra. The middle and four fingers are held straight. The benefits of practicing this mudra are, it helps in decreasing water element in our body, reduces swelling or edema resulting from accumulation of toxins in hand, legs or face. In the first figure, the divyangana holds Mutra Shaya Mudra in her right hand. Observe the position of toe in her right foot, which is a posture to activate the nerves of the toe. The snake again represents tightness in leg as part and pain felt in the upper thigh region. In the second figure, Vaidya is administering foot reflexology method with the tool in his hand to relieve from kidney related problems. The reflexology acupoint on foot is activated to release the accumulated liquid content. In right hand, she also shows activating the pressure point in between her upper lip and nose with a uh, herbal product to control the disturbance in body and activate the major nadi point here. I present the next slide, slide 12, Aditi Mudra. Aditi Mudra is different from other mudras. The thumb itself is folded here. When the tip of the thumb is placed at the base of ring finger, 
the or the middle finger or any finger and all uh, fingers are held together and straight it results in aditi mudra this mudra of placing thumb at the base of any finger is indicative of enhancing the effect of the element with respect to the finger in the picture the palm is held facing the sky in this mudra it is also called sthapini mudra which is used while installing god and uh, helps to increase the spiritual feelings at physical level the benefits of the mudra are that it controls any accidental jerks many figures uh, depict uh, all this mudra depending on the elements they represent the divyangana here depicts aditi mudra in her right hand where the akasha tattva of the middle finger is indicated to be activated she holds surya mudra ring finger is folded and pressed in left hand it may indicate that both mudras are to be practiced when unexpected events occur disturbing the calm state of body and mind there is a monkey depicted here monkey has attacked her that has caused the disturbance of both physical body and the state of mind she shows aditi mudra with middle finger related to akasha tattva taking support of the divine next uh, slide 13 i present prithvi mudra prithvi mudra is when the tip of the ring finger is kept perpendicular on the tip of the thumb and the other fingers or held straight it results in prithvi mudra it restores a mutual balance of agni and prithvi tattvas prithvi in physical body is with reference to the organs of supporting structure like muscles skeletal system best results are gained when practiced in both hands it builds up energy from within the body in muscular system the benefits of practicing the mudra is it uh, strengthens the body it increases energy level by pumping enthusiasm removes tiredness in body organs prithvi mudra indicates the positive approach in life since it establishes a happy mood the electrical energy in the body is in the tip of the ring finger and hence used in applying tilak on the forehead divyangana depicts prithvi mudra in her right hand in left hand she holds the serpentine stone also the figure shows a monkey hurting her foot prithvi mudra helps to build up muscular tension now i present slide 14 surabhi mudra surabhi mudra is when fingers of both hands are crossed uh pull diagonally to join the tip of the next finger leaving the thumb free it results in surabhi mudra regular practice of surabhi mudra gives benefits like it controls rheumatic inflammation and sharpens the intellect enhancing spiritual feelings it regulates the flow, flow of vata pitta and kapha regulates the flow of endocrine glands and helps in improving digestion divyangana indicates surabhi mudra held above her head and she has taken it up which is a tough posture but relieves from botheration of physical body at both shoulder shoulder neck or finger joints the way the feet are placed turn away is interesting which strengthens the ankle joints too now i present uh, plate 15 next uh, slide 15 that is shunya mudra uh shunya mudra is when the middle finger of akasha tattva is bent the tip touches the base of the palm and the thumb is kept on the middle finger joint the other fingers are uh relaxed or in upright position it results in shunya mudra 
the element of ether, akasha, or empty space in the body is harmonized with element of agni. The benefits of practicing this mudra are more with empty space in the body. It helps in normalizing deafness and ear related problems, helps to relieve earache and helps in problems of nose and throat related ailments. Nose also has empty space. It activates the skeletal system by helping it relieving numbness in the limbs. Divyangana holds Shunya Mudra in her left hand, which is very clear. The two uh, snakes are striking on Marmasthana of shoulder point and uh, the thigh point, which indicates the disturbance in both joints, or it may also indicate accumulation of toxins in these Marmasthanas. There are many panels in Raniki Bowl where snake is hitting exactly at shoulder point. The chart of uh, Marmasthana, which I have presented in the second finger, uh, uh, in the physical body is provided, which helps to know the specific shoulder and thigh points that are in trouble. She also depicts a special type of round stone in the right hand called serpentine stone, which is used by thera therapists in toxin elimination. The picture of serpentine stone is provided, another green serpentine stone. Now I present slide 16, Akasha Mudra. Akasha Mudra, when the tip of the thumb touches the tip of the middle finger and the other fingers are uh, held upright like this, it becomes Akasha Mudra. Akasha is empty space, ear has empty space, the benefits of practicing Akasha Mudra are, it helps in earache, deafness, and other ear-related problems. It helps in relieving disease of the bones as this mudra helps in re-equipping the elements of calcium in bones. It energizes the body by maintaining the health of teeth and heart-related problems. The Divyangana is holding a tool in Akasha Mudra and pressing or activating the points by the side of her here, which has uh, many nerves of facial organ intersecting at this point, at this point. Now coming to slide 17, I present Vayu Mudra. Vayu Mudra is when the tip of the index finger touches the base of the thumb and the thumb is placed on the middle finger, uh, middle of index finger. It results in Vayu Mudra. Uh, this is uh, when, the, when the tip of the index finger touches the base of the thumb, it's like this. And the thumb is placed on the middle of the index finger. It results in uh, Vayu Mudra. Other fingers are either relaxed or held straight. The benefits of practicing Vayu Mudra are it gives relief in reducing vata related problems like neck pain, cervical spondylitis. It gives a relief in problems of rheumatism and sciatica. Flatulence or acidity is cured by this mudra. Divyangana holds Vayu Mudra in her right hand where the forefinger is bent and the thumb is placed on the middle joint. The other fingers are bent as she is holding the chamara in Vayu Mudra. Chamara is usually for circulation of air. Now, coming to conclusion, uh, I would like to say why was the topic of Mudra Viknan chosen, chosen in a steppel monument? Some sculptures of Rani Kibab is about the therapeutic ways of medical science that flourished during the period of 11th century. The central theme of this 
architectural edifice is through sculptures, highlighting the importance of health and spirituality for the well-being of mankind. Rani Kivau reflects the mind in its religious, spiritual, and therapeutic aspects. The mysterious ancient Indian sculpture with its varied facets of life and love for art combined with spirituality can be seen at its peak in Ranikiva sculptures. The semi-divine female figures are correlated with the varied forms of Dakini group of semi-divines. Of the over 300 figures of female figures and the innumerable mudras of Mudralingna, only 12 are chosen in today's talk. We can estimate the vastness of knowledge concealed in the architecture of Rani Kivak's step well figures. The science of dealing with such mudras as healers of mind and body and that which helps in restoring good physical health and bring about an altered state of energy flow is called mudra vignana is depicted in many panels of Rani Kevov's step well. The multiple intentions probably being, it is to guide the women folk who visited to fetch water, to educate travelers and devotees who visited the step well, to seekers of knowledge interested in the study of iconographic details of deities, which are in great numbers, or listen to the teachings by masters. All were benefited by the work of Queen Udaimati, the sponsor of the monument. The inspiration for concept of peace in totality was probably drawn from the Sanskrit chanting, Bhumi Mangalam, Udaka Mangalam, Agni Mangalam, Vayu Mangalam, Gagana Mangalam, Surya Mangalam, Chandra Mangalam, Jagat Mangalam, Jiva Mangalam, Deha Mangalam, Mano Mangalam, Atma Mangalam, Sarva Mangalam Bhavatu Bhavatu Bhavatu, Sarva Mangalam Bhavatu Bhavatu Bhavatu, Sarva Mangalam Bhavatu Bhavatu Bhavatu. Meaning, at microcosmic, at the microcosmic level, may there be harmony amongst the elements on earth, on water, fire, wind, sky, sun, moon, and on our planet. At microcosmic level, may there be harmony and peace in all living beings in the body, in the mind and in the spirit. May there be tranquility in the universe and in everyone. It, thank you so much for going through, for listening my, to my lecture. Thank you. <laughs>